mounds of evidence were collected. However, the so-called Valley Drug Kingpin was not immediately taken into custody, and there's a reason for that. Sheriff Robbie Goins' successful strategy over the years has been to not make an arrest in similar cases, but to have ample evidence and then present it to the grand jury for prosecution. Goins and members of his 8th Judicial District Drug Task Force raided the home of 52-year-old Kermit York on Ivy Hollow Road in the Coolidge Davis Chapel area and seized a lot of evidence. York's residence is described as a virtual fortress. On Thursday night, the sheriff and officers met face to face with York, York's wife, a small child, and another man. A search of York's home led the investigators to the discovery and seizure of U.S. currency, oxycodone, morphine, hydrocodone, marijuana, and a stolen firearm from La Folle. Also taken in the raid were 10 vehicles, including a Corvette, Harley Davidson, trucks, cars, four-wheelers, and a wrecker. The investigation continued into the early morning hours of Friday where the sheriff was given consent to search a home at 265 Dillon Drive in the Glade Springs area of La Folle. At that house, officers found a safe hidden underneath the floor of a room containing nearly $60,000 in cash. Goins says the money likely came from drug sales. The sheriff tells WLAF News that the home and cash at Glade Springs are directly linked to York through a family member. The sheriff adds that Kermit York, a convicted felon with no employment, is believed to be one of Campbell County's largest sellers and distributors of illegal narcotics. York was last booked into the county jail in the summer of 2005, and this just in to WLAF News. Sheriff's deputies returned to the York home a little earlier this afternoon to seize more property. One of the largest auctions in the history of Campbell County took place earlier today at noon. Powell Auction was in town to conduct the event at the Regency Ballroom behind the Woodson Shell on Jacksboro Pike in La Follette, and there was a full house to watch, listen, and bid. Twenty-three bank foreclosures and owned property were on the auction block. It included lakefront, lakeview lots, residential, and commercial buildings. WLAF's Vic King was there and said there were some real bargains had ranging from a home at the country club to the former Woodson's trading post to the one-time A.G. and Walters furniture building. Jacksboro Elementary School is among state leaders. Exceptional. That's Director of Schools Donnie Poston's initial reaction to the good news about Jacksboro Elementary School. Jacksboro Elementary School is officially a reward school for the 2012-13 school year. Reward schools are those schools across the state in the top 5% for performance measured by a one-year success rate or top 5% for progress measured by a one-year TVAAS school composite. He says we needed some good news. Poston goes on to say that Principal Joan Crutchfield and the staff have done an outstanding job working as a team, keeping an eye on the goal towards student success, and it paid off for them. Principal Crutchfield tells WLAF that she's still floating after hearing the good news. She calls it a team effort from everyone in the building. 
Crutchfield goes on to say that every child counted and that the key was faculty, staff, and students. Poston adds that no county school is on the bad list. Poston closes by saying that he is anxious to find out how many other Campbell County schools had a really good year last year. There was a whole lot of smoke, a midday firehouse, sparked up today at a vacant home in La Folle. No injuries were reported. Traffic from sightseers proved to be almost as much a problem as the fire itself. The home is located on Sunshine Circle, which is on the north side of town near the ridge above 15th Street. That's back behind the corner market. The Campbell County Commission meets today at 6 o'clock at the courthouse in Jacksboro. Committee meetings began earlier at 5 o'clock with the airport committee followed by the environmental committee at 5.15. At 5.30, the beer board meets. WLAF has the story for you first thing tomorrow morning. Rissa and the folks at Terry's Pharmacy are out to collect 1,000 cans of food for this year's Thanksgiving food giveaway. Regardless of how many cans that are donated, Rissa will match that total. Drop off your canned food items at either Terry's Pharmacy location, La Follette, or Jacksboro. Many folks in Lake City plan to attend this evening's Anderson County Commission meeting. The reason is that they're hoping the commission will purchase the now vacant Bank of America building and turn it into a coal mining museum. Lake City, once known as Coal Creek, has a rich coal mining history and organizers are in hope such a museum will honor the community's rich mining heritage as well as draw travelers from I-75 into the town. The Anderson County Commission meets at 6.30 this evening at the courthouse in Clinton. And falls are a major threat to the health and independence of older adults. And now there's a way for you to learn what you can do to prevent them. You're invited to a seminar on fall prevention led by a licensed physical therapist from the La Follette Medical Center. The event is Wednesday, August 28th from 11.30 until 1 o'clock at the La Follette Methodist Church across from the hospital. A free lunch is included and space is limited. In order to register, call this toll-free number, 855-836-5444. That's a toll-free number, 855 855- Eight three six 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 eight two. Falls are the leading cause of injury, related deaths, and the most common cause of non-fatal injuries and hospital admissions for people aged 65 and older. And that's our news for today. Stand by. We'll be back with a press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. 28 people were booked into the Campbell County Jail this weekend. Timothy Paul Anderson, 37, of Newcomb, for aggravated assault by domestic violence. 27-year-old Amber Marie Bailey of Jones Trailer Lane in La Follette for violation of probation and on two KPS bench warrants. Tiffany Braden, 22, of Cave Springs Road, La Follette, for domestic violence by assault. 23-year-old Blake Shane Bratcher of Pleasant Road, La Follette, for theft of property under $500. Bradley Allen Brock, 24, of Oak Lane and Caraval, on a capious bench warrant and possession of a Schedule II controlled substance. 34-year-old Chad Ashley Bruce of Jellicoe, for violation of probation, on a capious bench warrant and on two counts of an attachment for child support. Ryan Wayne Daniel, 27, of Pleasant Lane, La Follette, for driving while revoked or suspended, third offense, 
violation of the registration law, and violation of the Tennessee financial law. 36-year-old Alfred J. Doherty of Crestview Lane in Jacksboro for theft of property from $1,000 to $9,999 and vandalism over $1,000. Joseph Granville Day, 24, of Rose Hill Drive, La Follette for public intoxication. 32-year-old Joseph Lee Ellison of North 4th Street in Jellicoe entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. Dallas Cody Frazier, 23, of Stonehenge Lane in Jacksboro for violation of probation. 47-year-old William R. Freeman of Kevy, Kentucky for DUI, failure to maintain control of a vehicle and violation of the implied consent law. Leanne Gallino, age 40, of Bolton Lane, La Follette, for theft of property under $500. 54-year-old Glenn T. Howard of Frontier Lane, La Follette, habitual motor vehicle offender, driving while revoked, and violation of the seatbelt law. Ronnie Willard Jeffers, 34, of Circle Drive in La Follette, for public intoxication and disorderly conduct. 29-year-old Jada L. Justice of North 12th Street, La Follette, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. Howard Stephen King, 26, of Archer Center Lane in Clarefield, for violation of probation. 32-year-old Lowell Wayne Ladd of Chapel View Drive, La Follette, for possession of prohibited weapons, possession of a Schedule II and a Schedule VI controlled substance. Jonathan Darrell Morris, 25, of White Oak Road and Duff for DUI and violation of the implied consent law. 22-year-old Christopher Anthony Poteet of Middlesboro Road, La Follette for burglary and vandalism over $500. Johnny Matthew Rosser, 41, of Oneida, for driving while revoked and simple possession of marijuana. 40-year-old Melissa Gail Rooker, of West Hemlock Street, La Follette, for disorderly conduct. Samantha Denise Scott, 32, of Pioneer, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. 35-year-old Jason Ernest Ward, of Roach Lane and Caravel on a capious bench warrant. Paul S. Wiley, age 40, of Long Hollow Road, La Follette, for violation of probation. 43-year-old Brian Keith Wilson of West Forest Street, La Follette, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. Christopher A. Worley, 26, of Sawmill Lane in Morley, for violation of probation. And last today, Dexter DeWayne Young, 22, of Mount Perkins Lane in Jacksboro for DUI. And that's a look at the news and the press release from the Sheriff's Department. Thank you for joining us. Hope we brought you up to date. And we invite you to join us again back here tomorrow. We sing happy birthday to you. And may all your dreams come true. Happy, happy birthday. Oh, oh, oh. This is your birthday song. Oh, oh, oh. Celebration all night long. Oh, oh, oh. May all you... Hey, Big Josh with you once again here on this Monday afternoon. We're going to look at our birthdays and anniversaries. Our birthday and anniversary club is brought to you by your friends here at WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli. Gary Reed turned 74 years old today. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Reed. And Evelyn Norman is 77 today. Happy birthday to you, Mrs. Norman. We hope you all are having a good day. Now, recapping our weekend, uh, yesterday Jerry Campbell celebrated. Happy birthday to you, Jerry. And Myra Sexton is 13 years old, or was 13 years old yesterday. Myra's a basketball player, 
at Jacksboro Middle School. So happy 13th to you, Myra. And on Saturday, Lillian Queener turned 91 years old. Happy birthday to you, Mrs. Queener. Very faithful listener, and we appreciate you. Shelby uh, Denise Sexton turned 43 on Saturday. Happy birthday to you, uh, Shelby. And Debbie Loveday had a birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday to Debbie. And today, Paul and Juanita Baird are celebrating their 25th anniversary. Happy anniversary, Juanita and Paul. And also, Joey and Mary Nelson is celebrating today. Happy anniversary to uh, Mary and Joey. And uh, let me get this here. Everett and Betty Hatfield are celebrating 53 years. Happy anniversary to Betty and Everett. We hope you guys are having a great day. We hope all of you are having a great day. Now, if you're celebrating today, for some reason we don't have your name on our list, we want you to have a great day too. But remember this, the only way that you can qualify to be in the drawing to win a birthday dinner for two or an anniversary dinner for two is if we have your name on our list. So get it in here and even if it's a little late, we'll take it and we want you to have a great day. So good Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow at about this same time. Good night. Gospel way. 